Hi everybody and welcome to another video in the Deep Learning for Audio with Python series. This time we're going to build a convolutional neural network for performing music genre classification. So basically we're building on top of the previous video where we reviewed, uh, well, we analyzed what a CNN is and how it works, as well as like the work that we've done on previous videos on uh, music genre classification using a multilayer perception. Now, this is going to be like a quite intense video, so just like take a sit and uh, relax. Uh, but this is going to be fun, for real. Okay, so what I want to do first is just like provide all the different steps, high level steps that we need to go through to build uh, like this um, CNN. And so uh, let me just like start by doing if name is equal to main, right? Okay, and so here I'll just like jot down all the different steps. So let's start from the first one. So we want to create a train validation and test sets. Now we've already seen the train and test set. Uh, we don't really know that much about validation set or cross validation. So, we, and we'll see that like in a second, but before let's go through like all the different steps here. Okay, so before Anything else, we built uh, like this different like train validation and test sets. Then we want to actually uh, build uh, the build the CNN nets. Right. So once we've built the CNN network, we need uh, to compile it. Compile the network, and then train the CNN. And once we've trained it, we are going to evaluate the uh, CNN on the test set. And finally, this is something like that many of you guys have asked me uh, in the previous video. So you'd like to show how to do inference with a model uh, that we've trained. So we're going to uh, make a prediction, right? So we're going to learn how to make a predictions make prediction, uh, I'd say like on a sample, right? Okay, so we have a lot on our hands here. So let's get started from this uh, first thing. So um, what I want to um, let you guys understand here is that so far we focused on only like a couple of like uh, sets when we were doing like training on our DL, deep learning like models. So and we had like the train set that we use for uh, training purposes and the test set that we use for evaluation. But the evaluation that we were doing uh, was basically, so we just had like the test set. And so that's all good. Like if you're not gonna do like, I mean, a lot of stuff, a lot of like hyperparameter tweaking. So if you're changing like the number of epochs that we use, the number uh, of like, yeah, the batch size, the number of layers in the architecture or the number of neurons per layers. But if you are changing all of these things to get better results, you can just use like the test set because in a sense, by doing that, you are um, kind of like optimizing uh, the, the, the results like of the model to uh, the test data, to the test set as well. So what you want to do with the test set is just like create, like split, like from the main data set and keep it there until you're done with training and hyperparameter tweaking, and then just use it in the end so that uh, the model, you're, we are sure that has never seen that data before, right? And so, and this is where the validation set comes in. So we can split like our data sets into the training set, the validation and the test set. So we're going to use the validation uh, set for evaluating uh, like our model while we tweak all the hyperparameters and see how well like it does there. And so we optimize it also like on the validation set, but then we'll leave the test set in the end so that we've never seen, the model has never seen that data before, right? Okay, so how do we get uh, that, uh, yeah, those splits? Well, we are gonna build a custom function for doing that. So what we uh, expect here is, uh, first of all, a X train, and now we, with X's, I'm referring like to the inputs, right? 
So input train, and then we're going to do an X uh, validation and X uh, test. And then we also want to get the Y uh, train, the Y validation and the Y test. Cool. So, and for Y here, I'm referring to the output or the target. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, create like this uh, this thing, right? So the, the 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 function, or let's just like use it. Okay, so we are gonna use a function that's called prepare datasets. Now this is a custom function, so we need to uh, define it. And here we're gonna pass in a couple a couple of arguments. So one is uh, is gonna be called the test size, and uh, we'll put this like to no point. 25 and the other one is going to be called the uh, validation size and we'll put this uh, to 0.2 uh, so what the test size uh, like uh, tells us is basically how much of the training set we want to use for um, the the test set right and for the validation size over here we're basically saying like with that value that's 20% of the training set that we've already separated from the test set is going to be used for uh, the validation set, right? Okay, so now let's go build uh, this function. So we'll define it over here. So we'll say, hey, give me uh, a prepare uh, data sets. And we already said that uh, we want a test size and a validation size arguments. Cool. Okay. So now what should we do here? So what we want to do here is first of all, a load in the data. So we'll do a, we we'll want to uh, load uh, data as the first step. Then as a, a second step, what we want to do is basically create the train test split. The first step here is create the train validation split. And uh, let's stop uh, to this uh, like steps for now. Right, okay, so how do we load the data here? Uh, this is straightforward and we already have a function here that we can use. And so I'm gonna use this one that as we see here, returns X and Y for like all of our data, uh, fetching it from uh, the JSON file that we used, and it's this guy over here uh, where we extracted all the MFCCs, all the labels, and we have a mapping with the indexes and the relative um, uh, labels here. And so we're going to uh, like read that file and extract the X and the Y. So the inputs and the outputs. So we'll do X, Y, and we'll do a load data and I'm going to pass this data path that's a constant that I have over here and this is my uh, path you may have something else to so remember <laughs> to uh, just like input the right path there right okay so now we have uh, the data so now what we want to do is split these data into train and test uh, sets uh, okay, so in order to do that, we need a function that we've come to know uh, quite a lot by now, and that comes from uh, scikit-learn. And so from scikit-learn model selection, uh, we want to import train test split. This is a nice function uh, that we can use to split a data into like a train and, and, and test splits. Okay, so here we expect x train, then we expect uh, x test, and then y uh, y train and a y test, and we'll do a train test split, and we'll pass in x and and y, and so this is gonna shuffle around the x and y's and then it's going to split them and uh, we, we should specify the proportion that we want to split this into and so we have a test size argument here well not surprisingly we're going to pass in our uh, test size 
uh, argument that that the prepared data sets uh, function accepts. Right. And so this way we should have our X train X test, Y train Y test. Nice. Now we should build the train validation split. Okay. So what we'll do is again, we'll do X train here. We'll do uh, uh, X validation here. And then here we again expect Y train and this time we'll have Y uh, validation. Again, we want to reuse the train test splits function, but this time we're going to pass in uh, X train and Y train, right? So we want to split the train set and split it into train and validation, right, into two subsets. And again, like the, the test size this time is going to be our validation size. And so this is going to be the percentage that's going to be used for uh, validation, right? And in this case, given we've given a 0.2, it's going to be a 20%, right? Okay, so now we are, we could say like that we are basically done, right? So because we have uh, X train, X uh, test, X validation, Y train, Y test, Y validation. So we could return all of these guys and we would be done. But unfortunately, this is uh, not the case. And the reason why this is not the case is because uh, TensorFlow in this case is gonna, uh, for an XNN, <laughs> sorry, for a CNN, uh, I don't know what an XNN is, but I mean, it could be like a new type of network, who knows, uh, right? Okay, so for a CNN, um, TensorFlow expects a 3D array uh, for each sample, right? And so far, uh, this X train here basically has samples where each sample is a 2D array, which should have this shape, if I'm not wrong. So where 130 is the number of like, time bins that we have and at each of these time bins we're taking the 13 uh, MFCC uh, values right now if you guys remember from my previous video uh, a CNN and like image data where uh, that we usually use with CNNs expect three-dimensional um, arrays and that's because we have a third dimension which is the channel and in this case uh, the channel is going to be just a dimension, uh, just the monodimensional, right? It's as if like all your data was uh, grayscale images. So where you have like one value uh, for each pixel that's determined by X's and Y's, right? Okay, if it was like an RGB, we would have like three here, right? but uh, we, we need to like add these extra dimension over here. So how do we do that? Well, this is like quite simple to do. And uh, so we'll do it on X train first. And so all we need to do here is take X train and given this is a, a NumPy array, so we're gonna say that we, we're gonna put like three dots there and we're gonna put in a NumPy.new axis, right? So with these three dots, we're basically saying, hey, give me what I have so far in terms of like the, the, the X train array, and then give me an extra axis after that, right? And now X train is gonna be a 4D array. So why is that? Well, because we have the number, it's not the, Button, but it's the number uh, of samples and then we're going to have 130, 13 and 1, right? So here like the, 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 the first dimension is just like the number of samples. So if we have 5,000 samples, this is going to be equal to 5,000, right? Okay, so X train is not the only um, yeah array that we need to uh, add a a dimension on. So we also want to uh, change uh, X validation. And so we'll basically do the same here. And same thing for X test. Cool. Okay, so here we have X test. 
Good. So now we should have all we need for like our training process and validation and testing. Right. Okay. So now we can return all of this test split, uh, all of this uh, data set splits. So we'll take these guys here. So we already written them. So I'm not going to rewrite them. Uh, cool. So this should be done. So if this works correctly, if this function works correctly, now we should be able to have all of our train validation and test sets down here, which is great. Now onto the next step, building the CNN. So here we need to build the, the architecture itself, the network. So what we uh, we're going to use again, another like custom function for doing that. I'm not going to write like all the instructions here, like in the, uh, yeah, here, like in the main. And the main reason for that is because like, it's a lot of like, uh, stuff that we're going to write. And so I don't want to like have a lot of mess. so I prefer just like to modularize everything. By the way, this is a good, a very good advice. R uh, if you have like a lot of instructions that go well, like together, even if you're doing just like simple scripting, just try like to, to use like either functional programming or like object oriented programming so that, I mean, you don't end up like with a lot of like instructions that are difficult to understand. Okay. So we'll do, uh, so we expect like the model itself. And so we'll create a, uh, function here that we'll call it, uh, build model. And now this function is going to accept an argument uh, that's called uh, the input shape, right? So now we, we'll see what this is like in a second. But before that, let's start building this function. So yeah, let me slide this down. Okay, so yeah, we don't want all of that for sure. But we want uh, to define build model, we have the argument that's uh, input shape, right? Okay, so now we need to do like a bunch of things. So we want to, first of all, uh, create a model. Then this model uh, is gonna be a CNN with three convolutional layers followed by max pooling uh, layers. So we are gonna write first conv uh, layer, then we are going to have a second conv uh, layer and a third conv layer. Then we're going to flatten uh, the output of the convolutional layers and fit it uh, into dense layer. So we'll fit that into dense layer. And uh, finally, we'll have a, an output layer that uses softmax cool okay so let's <clears throat> let's uh build all of this but before we can do that we need to import keras right okay so we'll do a import and we should say tensorflow dot uh keras and we'll import this as keras right so yeah, I'm really busy. I don't want to write too many things. Okay, so we need to build the model uh, initially. So we'll do a model uh, that's equal to, uh, we should say, uh, keras and uh, sequential. So this is a sequential model. Right, and now we want to build uh, the first uh, convolutional layer. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to take the model and there's a, a great method that we can use on the, on the model and it's called add here. And so here we can add a layer to a model. That's basically like the, the, the idea, like the semantics of model.add. Okay. So what do we want to uh, add here? So we want to add a, a layer and specifically, uh, we want to add a conv 2D layer. So it's convolutional uh, layer. Now we need to pass quite uh, a lot uh, of values like to, to this uh, layer. So first of all, we should decide which, uh, not which, but how many kernels, how many filters we want in these convolutional layers. And so we'll say we want 32 uh, filters. Then we should decide uh, the grid size of the kernel. And this is going to be a quite customary three by three. 
And then what we want to uh, specify here is the uh, type of activation that we want to use. So the activation function, and we're going to be using ReLU. So rectified linear unit. Now, if you're not really familiar with all of these like weird terms that I'm using, so uh, like kernel, uh, grid size, convolution. So you can check out uh, my previous video that introduced like the theory behind uh, CNNs. I think it's gonna show up anytime like over here. And so you can click that and check that out and then come back here because this is the fun stuff. Okay. So now we've specified the number of kernels, the uh, the size of the grid, uh, the size of the kernel, and the activation function that we want to use. And since we are like at the first uh, hidden layer here, we should specify the input shape, right? So what's the input shape? Well, the input shape it's as simple as the argument input shape, right? <laughs> and then we pass in the build model function, uh, right? But Obviously, this doesn't tell us much about the input shape itself. So let's go back. Let's go back here to to the main. Okay. So now let's extract the input shape. So we'll create the input shape, which is going to be a uh, tuple here, right? Okay. And so the input shape is going to be given by. Um, X train and here this is going to be equal to uh, X train oops sorry not that so X train dot shape okay and then uh, one so basically like we are taking the uh, this like shape here uh, of the of the X train we could have like taken X validation or like X test for that matter. Uh, but then we are taking like the, 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 the shape like of the, of, at, at index one. And then we are gonna take the X train shape at index two. And uh, finally, we're gonna take the shape at index three. Right? So if you guys remember, I told you that X train over here, right? X train, yeah, over here, it's a 4D uh, array where we have like the number of samples and then uh, we have like 130 uh, like time bins and then we have 13 MFCCs and one which is like the channel, like the depth, right? So we know that each sample has this shape, 130 by 13 uh, by one, right? And so this is the shape that we want to use like as an input for our CNN. And so here we build like this input shape uh, tuple, we pass it in here in the build model and then we pass it down here when we are uh, creating like the first convolutional layer, right? And so this is the input shape. Hope this is clear right okay so now we have our first convolutional uh layer so what we want to do next is add uh, another layer here but this is not going to be a convolutional layer but a max pooling uh layer which is going to down sample our uh input okay so this is going to be a max pool 2d right Okay, and so we know uh, from our previous video that max pooling uh, has a bunch of settings that we should set there. So uh, the first thing that we want to set is the uh, so-called like pool size or like the grid size. And here we're going to use like grid a pooling, uh, a pool size of uh, three by three. Then we want to specify the strides. So, and uh, the strides, vertical and horizontal, are going to be uh, two uh, by two. And here we also want to add a padding. And the type of padding, the zero padding uh, that we'll use, it's the same. So we're going to just like use like padding uh, throughout like all the edges, like around all of the, um, yeah, all of like the, <laughs> the the convolutional like output that we get out of like this 
first convolutional layer. Uh, cool. So now we have max pooling as well as like a convolutional uh, convolutional layer. Uh, and what we want to add here is a final thing, is a final layer here. And this layer, it's basically batch normalization. So now batch normalization is a quite complicated like mathematical, I mean, like the, the mathematical process beyond, uh, behind batch normalization, it's quite uh, complicated. So, and as they usually like say in these cases, and it's well beyond uh, like the scope, like of this uh, introductory course, but all you should more or less like the, the intuition that you can have about batch normalization is that it's a process that standardizes, that normalizes the uh, activations in a current layer and the activations that get presented to like the subsequent layer. By doing so, the great thing, the great advantage is that we uh, kind of like speed up training by a lot, really. So the, um, the models are going to converge way faster. And then the other great thing is also like that the models are going to be way more uh, reliable. Cool. Yeah, by the way, let me know like if you want to know more about batch normalization. But as I said, like this is like quite like complicated, like mathematical topic. So I don't want to cover it in this series. But if I see like that you guys like leave a lot of comments to know what this is, I may just like create a video about just batch normalization. So let me know. Uh, cool. So this is basically like the, the, the overall first convolutional layer, I would say. So now we want to build another couple of this. So the second one um, is going to be basically like the, uh, the, the same as this. Uh, but uh, in uh, the third layer, we're going to change a couple of like parameters here. So here we're going to change the, uh, the size of the kernel and we're going to move it to two by two. And same thing here for uh, the, the max pooling, the pool size here. We're going to move it like to uh, two by two as well. Cool. So now we are done with the uh, convolutional layers. And now the next step is to flatten the output. And so, and we know that out of like this three convolutional layers, we're just uh, expecting a two dimensional array. And so we want to flatten that into a 1D uh, array. So how do we do that? Again, this is like very, very simple with Keras and TensorFlow because it's as simple as calling Keras dot uh, layers dot flatten. And we've, I think like we've, I don't know like if we've seen this already like in a previous video but if we haven't <laughs> it's as simple as this right okay so now we've flattened uh, uh, the the output uh, of the convolutions and so the next thing that we want to do is add a dense layer a fully connected layer for classification and so and here we'll do again a model uh, dot add uh, but this time we're gonna use a dense layer. So we'll do keras.layers.dense. Dot dot, uh, dense. And I'm sure like we've seen a lot of like dense dense layers like in the in the previous videos. So now um, here like in the dense layer, if you guys remember, we should specify how many neurons we want. And uh, for this um, network, we're gonna use 64 neurons and then we should specify specify the type of activation and the activation here again is going to be ReLU, so rectified linear unit. Now, if you guys don't remember what ReLU is, what an activation function is, again, I have a video on that, which hopefully should be over there. So just like click there and, and just like go learn that. So these are all like very important things that we need to learn to like master uh, like deep learning. So if you don't know about that, Go check that out. Okay, so now let's move on. So we've, applied, we've flattened the convolution output. Uh, we've uh, fed that into a dense layer, but now I, in order to avoid, avoid <laughs> overfitting, sorry, I'm gonna add uh, an extra 
thing here. And again, this is another thing that we've seen. And this is uh, a dropout, right? And and I'll set a dropout to 30, dropout probability to 30%. Uh, again, if you don't remember what dropout is or how to uh, combat, how to solve um, overfitting, I have a video on that. Just go check that out. Should be over here. Right. Okay, cool. So now we are at the output layer, right? And the output layer here is again a um, dense layer. So we'll do keras.layers.dense. But now we want as many neurons as the number of genres that we want to predict. So here, guys, let's go to the to this data thing. So here we have 10 different genres. And so we want 10 different neurons. And, and each neuron obviously is going to represent uh, a different genre. And as the activation, uh, this time we want to use soft max. And if you guys remember, soft, what softmax does is it creates a probability distribution, kind of like scores, like for each of these like 10 um, neurons, 10 possible like categories. And if we add up like all of these like values for the 10 different genres, then we're going to get one. So how do we do predictions there? Well, we just like take the, the index with the highest value and we're going to map that onto like a relative genre. Cool. So this is the output layer. So <laughs> we are done. So as I said, as I promised, this was like a quite long process to build this network, but now we are done. So we have our nice CNN uh, with three convolutional layers. And after each comb layer, we have max pooling and we've added also batch normalization. And uh, out of after that, we, we flatten the results and then we feed like the uh, the one dimensional array into a dense layer. And finally, we feed all of that into a softmax classifier. Good. Now we are done. So we can return the model. That's like the thing that we want. Uh, yeah, really, we, we, we want the most. Okay, so this is the model over here. Now we need to compile the network. So we've done this like multiple times already, guys. So I'm going to try to power through this. So we want to specify the optimizer here. And so we're going to uh, just like do keras.optimizer and I'm going to choose Adam and I'm going to specify the learning rate, which is going to be equal to 0.0001. Right. Okay. But this is not the opti. <laughs> what, what have I written here? So optimizer. Right. Okay. And then we'll do a model dot uh, compile. And in the model dot compile, we, we, we need to pass a bunch of things. So the first thing that we need to pass again is the <laughs> optimizer, right? And that's the one that we've just built. Then uh, we want to pass the loss function. We need to specify that. And in this case, we'll use the pass category call cross entropy function. So let me see if I've spelled this well, if I've typed this well. So sparse categorical cross entropy. Yeah, it seems fine. And then we need to pass the accurate, uh, um, I think it's called metrics, sorry. It's the metrics and the metrics that we want to um, track here is accuracy. Cool. Okay. So now we need to train the, the model. And again, we've done this already multiple times. So I'm going to power through this. So we do a model uh, dot fit. And now we want to pass X train. So these are the inputs uh, for like the training set. Then we are going to pass the labels for the training set. Then we want to pass the validation data. So this is the cross validation split that we've created. Uh, and uh, here uh, we're going to pass in the X uh, validation, <laughs> right? 
<laughs> and the Y validation. Right, so now we have another couple of hyperparameters that we should uh, specify. So the batch size, 32, and then we need to specify the number of epochs that we want to like run this uh, training for. And we'll, we'll uh, yeah, just put in 30. Now, these are like other like high level hyperparameters that we can tweak. We're not gonna do this here. Uh, but uh, remember guys like that you can tweak like the batch size, the number of epochs as well as like other hyperparameters to, to find what works best for your uh, problem. Right, okay, so I think we should be done like with, with training here. So now like the, the last thing that remains to do is to evaluate the CNN on the test set. N now, let's do that. And uh, in order to do that, we, we can use a, uh, a really handy function from Akeris. So that's gonna return us the test uh, error as well as the test accuracy. And so we'll do a model dot uh, evaluate over here. And uh, we're gonna pass in the X test. So the inputs for the for the test split as well as the targets for the test split, which is not Y train, but Y test. Uh, right, and we're gonna say verbose uh, equal one. Uh, right, okay, so now let's print uh, the result here. And so we'll say um, accuracy on test set is, and we'll just pass in to format uh, test uh, accuracy over here. Good. I think uh, we, we've we've done like a lot of work so far. So before we we make like any predictions, uh, I feel like we should just like run the script and hopefully if I haven't made like any mistakes and uh, probably I have made a few here, uh, we should be able like to to see like uh, this and see like if if our CNN works. So this is exciting. So let's try this. So. Okay, so I'm running here. So it's gonna take some time, if you guys remember also from previous video to load uh, like the data. So hopefully this is gonna work. So let's wait. Yes, it's working. Now it's gonna take some time to, to do the whole training. So I'm gonna post the video and reprise like once like the whole thing is done. And here we go with the results. So it's quite exciting because uh, the accuracy that we are, were able to get on the test set is 70%, which is like a good, good improvement on the previous accuracy that we were able to get on the, uh, with the multilayer perception architecture, which is nice. And, and again, like it shows like how like CNNs are very effective, also like with audio data. So, and we haven't done like very like crazy things like on anything. Like this is a very simple architecture, but still like it's a nice result. Like 70% on a genre classification task with like 10 genres. Well, I mean, it's starting to, to get like nice. Okay, so now let's take a look at the accuracy that we have on the train set over here, like in the last epochs, and it's 74. Then we have the accuracy like here on the on the validation which is like 71 well i mean it's good <laughs> it's like 70 percent so we should be uh, okay with this nice okay so now uh, we need to do like the the last bit right so just let me uh, close this okay so we need to like make a prediction on a single sample so so we want to do like the so-called inference Right, okay, so let's write a function for doing that. And so we'll, we'll just like call it predict. Yeah, it's very uh, straightforward. And we'll pass in uh, an X and uh, a Y. So this is like the, uh, yeah, the input data for that uh, sample. And this is like the, the label. So, cause we're gonna compare the actual label to so the actual genre against the 
uh, predicted genre. Okay, so we need to, to like get x and get uh, y. So how do we do that? Well, we can just like take uh, any <laughs> sample from the test set really. So let's say like we're gonna take like the, the sample at index 100 from uh, the, the test set. And so, and for y, uh, we're gonna take y test. And so this is 100. Now, so we are passing x and y into uh, predict here. But obviously, like we're getting an error here because predict isn't defined yet. So we need to define predict. <laughs> okay, so let's do define predict. And so we have x uh, and uh, y over here. Nice. So um, in order to do a prediction, so it's it's very simple, right? So we, we just like uh, take the model and <laughs> <laughs> I'm not passing in the model. Yes, so we need to pass the model here, right? So the train model, so we've trained the model, we need to pass it because otherwise, how are we gonna <laughs> perform like the prediction? So we need the model. So we get, so here we need model as an argument. And so we'll, we'll do a model dot uh, predict, right? And then we'll pass in x. So we'll we'll pass in uh, the input data of for that sample, and then we're gonna get a prediction. Predictions or prediction, right? Okay. So really, here I'm lying to you because like x. In itself, it's not gonna it's not gonna be enough. So we need to change this, right? So cause uh, x. So if we analyze x, so x uh, is gonna be a two dimensional. Oh damn, <laughs> two dimensional array. Well, sorry. In this case, uh, is gonna be a, a three dimensional array, right? So a hundred thirty by 13 uh, by one, right? Uh, but what uh, model.predict expects is a four dimensional array, right? And the fourth dimension should be like here at the beginning, this guy here. And it basically like uh, is used like to specify like the, the number of samples that we are we want to predict. And that's done because we, when we use model.predict, usually we pass in uh, a batch of samples that we want to predict. And so, and these are gonna be like, I mean, we, we need to like specify all of these different samples. And this means that we need an extra dimension for doing that. In our case, we're just gonna be like a one here, right? Uh, okay, so how do we do that? Well, we've already seen how to uh, like augment an array with an extra uh, dimension. So we'll we'll do that once again. So we'll take x and we'll say that we'll do a np dot uh, new axis, and uh, then uh, we're just gonna pass in the dots. And so basically, we are inserting a new access like at the beginning of the array and then we are copying like all the rest okay and so now this uh, should work okay so uh, we make the prediction but what we should understand is that the prediction that we get is a uh, two-dimensional array so like this prediction here prediction is a two-dimensional array and we have values over here uh, where like we have basically 10 values and the 10 values represent the different scores for the 10 different genres, right? And so this is like the, the results like of the, of the softmax activation function. So 
we are not really like at the, at the, the point where we already have like a prediction. So we have like the predicted index. We need to extract that from this two dimensional array. So what we want to do here is to uh, get the max, uh, the index where we have the max value. So extract um, index with max value. So, oops. So we'll do a predicted index and uh, we're going to use a nice utility uh, function from NumPy that's called argmax and uh, we'll pass in a prediction and we'll specify that we want to uh, calculate the, um, the, the, the max on the axis number one which is basically like on this guy here right and what we're going to get out of this is a uh, one dimensional array where we have a value like this like between zero and nine uh, in this case and uh, that's going to be like the index that's been predicted and now we could potentially uh, take this index and map it onto like a genre label and we could use like this mapping here so like for example here we know that disco like is zero reggae is one but i'm not going to do that because i i don't want to right you guys can do that well actually it's a nice like exercise for you okay but now we have the uh predicted index so now let's do a uh print where uh, we say, uh, what do we want to say here? So we want to say the, so the expected um, output or expected index is equal to a, a variable and the predicted uh, index is equal to another variable. And so let's fill in the variables here and the expected index is this y variable over there, y argument. And the predicted in index is just predicted index here. Cool. Okay, so this should be working now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rerun the script and obviously it's gonna take some time because it's gonna like retrain everything. But then by the end of this, we're gonna try to predict the sample, uh, the sample at index 100, like in the test set, right? And see if the, the model is predicting it correctly. So now let me run the scripts. I'll pause the video and just go back, come back when uh, we have a result. And here we are back guys. So here we have our results. So the expected index for uh, our sample was nine, which we know is, uh, yeah, let's take it here. It's metal, right? So this was a, uh, a, a metal sample and the predicted index was nine. Good. Okay, so the, uh, <laughs> the model I performed correctly in this instance. Nice. So guys, we are done. This was like a quite intense video and uh, I hope you like you really enjoyed that because now you know how to build like a CNN uh, classifier and this like music genre classifier is doing like pretty well overall. Uh, so like for next video, we're gonna start looking into recurrent neural networks. So which are like another architecture, another type of uh, architecture that's very important like with audio data or like music data more specifically because like we can interpret that as like time series, right? And so like next time is gonna be all about like the theory behind RNNs. I really hope you like you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, please remember to subscribe. If you have any questions and you may have some now because like this was quite intense, just like <laughs> write them like in the comment section below and I'll see you next time. Cheers.